Hey there, Valley Weather Geeks. It's that time. Weather for Weather Geeks. This is your daily dose of really detailed, in-depth weather coverage that uh, we do every Monday through Friday and sometimes even on the weekends as well, depending on what's going on with the weather across the region. All right, this evening I'm recording this at around 7 p.m., and this is what the radar looked like at that point. Most of you watching will be watching this well afterwards. But uh, the snow was starting to approach from the west. Now, the leading edge of this, a lot of this is probably not quite reaching the ground, but this is certainly legitimate snow back here towards Cleveland and Mansfield and uh, heading into the Akron-Canton area. This is, uh, you know, what I've been calling kind of the poor man's Alberta Clipper, a weaker version of what we had uh, yesterday morning, the storm that dropped two and a half, even three inches in some spots. Uh, this one is kind of a weaker version of that, not expecting anyone to get three inches out of this. A little bit of a closer view showing the uh, snow approaching from the west. And this will get going this evening. Here's our high-resolution future cast. I've skipped ahead to 9. Now, the model is not doing a very good job portraying the leading edge, which will be more like in here at 9 o'clock. Keep that in mind. But as we go through the night, it does bring in the steady snow. It'll be mostly light occasionally, maybe moderate, but mostly what I would call just light snow. And it's going to kind of fall at varying intensities throughout the night. There may even be times when the snow stops, especially if you look south of 224. And then uh, deep into the overnight into tomorrow morning, there'll be a little lake enhancement setting up. So the bottom line is a lot of this is going to occur when you're sleeping tonight. And by the time you get up tomorrow morning at a re hopefully a reasonable hour, uh, it should not be snowing in most of the valley. In fact, uh, most of the daylight hours. In fact, probably the entire daylight hours tomorrow will be dry. As far as what the computer models are doing... Uh, Sorry if uh, some of the logos here are covering this up, but uh, right around an inch is where most of the models are honed in on at the airport anyway, and I think that that is reasonable. I think that uh, there is a chance that some places get an inch and a half or two inches out of this, particularly in Mercer County and northern parts of Trumbull County, where there can be a little bit of lake enhancement later on tonight. But for the rest of us, coating to half an inch, maybe an inch worth of fresh powder tonight. This is what we call a high-ratio snow event. Uh, very uh, kind of dry or fluffy snow, if you will. Uh, the liquid to snow ratio is probably 20 to 1. Uh, a lot of times you get ratios that high, even a little higher than that, when it's this cold out. No higher than the teens right now. We'll slowly rise into the 20s later on tonight. All right, here's a look at Futurecast, uh, showing our system moving through tonight. Gone by daybreak tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow, not a bad afternoon at all. We'll get above freezing. Uh, we'll get into the mid-30s tomorrow. It'll be nice to see a little bit more sunshine. It's going to be a fairly cloudy day. I think there can be some breaks of sun Friday. We're going to wait on the next system until Friday night. So the daylight hours Friday just fine. Into a southwest flow behind this warm front. So we'll get into the 40s and uh, enjoy that because it's not going to last very long. The rain comes in at some point Friday evening is, is here through a chunk of the overnight. And even though the RPM model here doesn't produce a lot of backlash snow showers, I think there will be some that work in late Friday night into Saturday. I suspect there will be some snow showers flying around in through here as you get up and around Saturday morning, and the cold air will start pouring in. So, unfortunately, the warm-up is uh, is going to be a fairly brief one. And, uh, you know, talking about those temperatures, uh, well, first of all, let's talk about uh, the rest of the weekend. Uh, we get our, our showers into Friday night. Here's a look at Saturday morning. Again, the snow showers around. Then on Sunday... We're firmly entrenched in the cold air at this point. I think there'll be some snow showers and flurries flying around. It's going to be very cold with wind chills probably no better than the single digits to around 10 on Sunday. Interesting for East Coast weather weenies, keeping a close eye on low pressure off the coast of North Carolina here uh, Sunday. The afternoon run of the GFS has it offshore. The morning run had it close enough uh, to the coast that this would be a, a pretty big snow event for parts of uh, Virginia, maybe D.C., maybe Philadelphia, Atlantic City, up to New York City and Boston. That was the morning run, the afternoon run, quite a bit farther right and less enthusiastic. So weather weenies along these coasts, uh, their moods have been shifting dramatically all day. This GFS idea does not really have the support of other modeling, so I think uh, snow geese in the big cities on these coasts will probably be disappointed with the weekend. Uh, here's a look at Monday here. You notice not much has changed. We're still looking at this kind of a flow off the lakes. The, the snow belts are going to do really well with this. We're going to see occasional flurries and snow showers here. And boy, is it going to be cold uh, during the course of next week. In fact, uh, you, could, uh, you could say that this will be dangerously cold. Let me hop back into my graphics here. And I'm going to skip ahead. I could going to skip ahead 
it doesn't. It's not going to let me see. There we go. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to the temperatures, the wind chills, I should say, here as we go into the weekend. Look at some of these numbers out across the Midwest. Uh, yikes, you're seeing some stuff flying by there that is as cold as, as minus 20 to minus 25, even minus 30 as possible, upper Midwest into southern Canada as uh, we go into the weekend. So that's some life-threatening cold up there. Now, as far as our weather pattern, this cold snaps uh, for the weekend into early next week I think it's kind of the grand finale of harsh cold for a while. Uh, the pattern is going to start favoring more temperate type of patterns as we go into the final stretch of January. Now, does that mean no snow? Well, no, not really at all. In fact, uh, I think snow chances may increase during the last 10 days of January. It's just not going to be as brutally cold as the current air mass and the air mass that we'll have over the weekend and early on next week. So, Keep that in mind, that uh, just because it won't be as cold doesn't mean we won't have snow. In fact, you know, again, the, the southern branch of the jet stream may be pretty active last 10 days of the month, and that could lead to some snow chances for us as we roll into the final stretch of January. All right, thanks for watching our Weather for Weather Geeks video on this uh, Wednesday night. Hope you have a great night, and I will see you right back here tomorrow.